Open your Bibles, please. 1 Samuel chapter 15. We'll, we'll look at uh, verses 1, 2, and 3. 1 Samuel chapter 15. Oh, how I love the Word of God. You know, it's, uh, I've, I've esteemed His words, Job said. I've esteemed the words of His mouth more than my necessary food. You really need to eat this stuff. You really, he said, eat my flesh. My words are spirit. They are life. Uh, you get instructed. You get edified or comforted, rebuked, however it is the Lord wants to deal with you that particular morning or that day. And uh, you're not going to get anything like this from human beings or the television or the Internet, really, uh, unless you're listening to solid preaching. Uh, and you need to hear stuff. You need to hear truth. You need to, now more than ever, this country needs Jesus more than any other time in its history, maybe back up to the outset of the revolution when we were fighting and struggling to become a nation. And this nation is drifting far, far apart. I wonder how much longer it'll be before the ax falls. And uh, brothers and sisters, don't get caught up in the distractions of this world especially politics. For, for whatever reason, a lot of God's people get interested in politics, and I know a lot about politics. I was in it. Uh, it's a web. It's like a fly being caught in a spider's web. Watch out. I, I remember a couple of weeks ago, there was the big thing about uh, McCarthy, whether he was going to be named Speaker of the House, and for a whole week, there was this drama because he kept losing the vote, not getting enough votes, and everybody was always going to... And it was like a soap opera. I like, tune in tomorrow and see whether Sally really loves Frankie. You know, I mean, <laughs> you had to stay tuned. And, uh, and I told somebody in church, I said, listen, this is all a distraction. It doesn't mean anything. He'll probably get what he wants, and it'll be the same old baloney. Nothing meaningful is really going to change. And I said, watch. When this thing is settled and it blows over, the, the news, because I know how the media operates, they must move on to something quickly that's just as uh, entertaining or interesting they, because they want to hold your interest. They want to hook you. That, that's how a lot of these algorithms are made by tech, uh, tech companies to keep you looking at other sites and whatever. He said, what do you mean, Brother Militello? I says, guaranteed. After this thing is over, there'll be another big topic that they'll be talking about and talking about until it comes out of their ears. He said, what's that? The debt, the debt crisis, the deficit, the, the money, the Treasury's going to run out of money and they got to raise the debt ceiling and it's going to be critical and the Republicans and the Democrats of Biden have to get together on this and that'll go on for quite a while. And I guarantee you when they reach a deal, because they're eventually going to reach some sort of a deal, there'll be something <laughs> coming along immediately, <laughs> That'll be a drama, it's like a drama, and it'll get your attention there, so it's one thing after another, a lot of people don't realize this, they get hooked on, it's like being hooked on a soap opera, or going to the dog track and betting on the dogs as they run around the track chasing a rabbit that they're never going to catch, <laughs> they run around the track, they never get the rabbit, but they seem to get close, I don't know why I got off on that thing, let's go. 1 Samuel 15, first verse. Samuel also said, oh, I'm entitling this, sorry, I didn't give it a title, genocide, genocide. You should know what genocide is. It's the elimination of a race, a whole race of people, a whole nationality. The Jews, Hitler practiced genocide on the Jews. At the turn of the century, not long, I, I guess around World War I or just before, I got to look it up, the exact date, but the Turks practice genocide on the Armenians. Turks and Armenians hate each other. Uh, Arabs hate Iran because they, they, they're not Arab. They're, they're Muslims, but they're not Arab. And there's a tremendous enmity between Iran and Saudi Arabia. It, it's like in the animal kingdom, the cobra and the mongoose. These are great fighters. They hate each other's guts. And that's why I tell people history is so important. Because you've got to know the history sometimes of these countries. It, it explains their actions. Who hates who and why? And how far back does that thing go? And you, it, by reading the history, you could also discover what's going on more with Ukraine and Russia. And they're, they're not so much the hatred there, but Russia thinks that Ukraine really belongs to them. That, that being Ukrainian is like being uh, half Russians. It's like your half brother. So uh, that explains a lot of that. But he says here in 
verse 1, Samuel also said unto Saul, the Lord sent me to anoint thee to be king over his people, over Israel. Now therefore, watch, hearken thou unto the voice of the words of the Lord. Notice words, W-O-R-D-S, the King James Bible words. People can use, well, the word of God, the word of God. Yeah, I have the words of God. I've got the word of God in my heart. And more than that, I've got the words of God. Uh, the words of God from the King James Bible. They're pure and they're holy. Uh, that's why you're supposed to put them in your heart. And uh, he says in verse 2, Thus saith the Lord of hosts, I remember, here's the Lord, he's got a long memory, I remember that which Amalek, that was uh, Esau's grandson, uh, Jacob's uh, bro brother Esau, his grandson, was Amalek, did to Israel how he laid wait for him in the way when he came up from Egypt. When they crossed the Red Sea into the wilderness, Amalek attacked them and attacked the, 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 hind part, the back part of the Israeli caravan, you might say. And uh, now go. Boy, the Lord was so angry with that. Now, Am Amalek is a type of the flesh, brothers and sisters. It shows up as the first people to attack Israel after they get out of Egypt. So... What happens when you get saved and you're delivered from Egypt? Because Egypt is a type of the world. You know that. And what happens shortly after you get saved? Amalek attacks you. And he attacks your weakest points. And what is Amalek? A type of the flesh. So what does he want to get the new believer involved in? Fleshly gross sins. He wants to discourage you immediately. He wants to get you thinking Am I really saved? If I'm saved, why do I still got this? Nothing changed here. This is still happening. What is this? See how he works? Now, verse, and by the way, Paul tells the Colossians, we're going to look at this more carefully about this issue. Verse 3, now go and smite Amalek. This is, commit, this is an order given to Saul. He's got a contract to kill like the mafia boss. Here. We want this guy rubbed out. We want him to disappear. You're going to do it, or else you disappear. Okay? And you don't, if you're in the mafia or whatever, you're a soldier, you don't go, well, well, I'll go home and talk to my wife. I'll pray about it. Or I got to just, no, you do it. <laughs> now go and smite Amalek and utterly, utterly destroy all that they have and spare them not. Well, Saul did not, and that's why he lost the kingdom. But slay both man and woman, infant and suckling, ox and sheep, camel and ass. In other words, kill their livestock, kill their infants, everything, everything they're connected with. Brother Militello, doesn't God love everybody? <laughs> what the? You can tell somebody really doesn't know the Bible. They say these things because they hear others say it sounds good and they want to, you know, feel pious and all of that. So, God is love. Well, read this part of Scripture and tell me how much love he showed Amalek. I mean, at least he, in Nineveh, he gave them a chance to repent. He sent Jonah there. But he's telling Saul, I'm sending you to kill. I'm sending you to execute a contract and even their livestock, and I don't want to hear any stories or any excuses. You go and do it. Well, not long after I got saved, uh, the Lord kind of dealt with me about this, and in a number of areas, he showed me, you, you better get with it. You better start killing the things that'll, that are, the devil will use to kill you. And he showed me in Colossians chapter 3, verse 5. Now, chapter 3 in Colossians is powerful. It, it talks about the first verses. If, if ye then be risen with Christ, seek those things which are above, where Christ sitteth on the right hand of God. Set your affection on things above, not on the things of the earth. Uh, if, if you're dead and your life is hid with Christ in God. Now, look at verse 5. Notice 5. Your physical sense is how many? 5. Notice this chapter, three. What is three? Three is the number of manifestation. On the third day he rose again. Father, Son, Holy Spirit, manifest God. Three, three different ways, three distinct persons. Here you have verse five. And that means death. 
Five is death in the Bible, nine times out of ten. Not always, but nine times out of ten. And it starts off with the word mortify. Now, Paul knew exactly what the King James translators had no trouble with that word. It comes from the Latin, and I had plenty of Latin in the Jesuit school. And the Latin for death was mors mortis. That's where you get the word mortuary, uh, uh, mortician. I'm, I'm mortified by your behavior. In other words, I'm being killed. I feel like a dead person. Mortify means kill. That's what it means, kill. And death is a five-letter word, D-E-A-T-H. Mortify what? Therefore, your members, do I need to tell you that? Which are upon the earth. Here it goes. Fornication. Two, uncleanness. Three, inordinate affection. Four, evil concupiscence. You got to look that up, folks. Sometimes, well, you, I, I know it, but it's, a lot of people don't know that word concupiscence. It's filthy. Covetousness. Covetousness, greed, covetousness, which is idolatry. And he defines it, not only covetousness is five. So you got what? Fornication, one, uncleanness, two, inordinate affection, three, evil concupiscence, four, covetousness, five. There you go, five. And then he wraps them up and he calls it and he ends covetousness with idolatry. That's when you have something or someone in your life that means more to you than Jesus Christ. Something or someone in your life that's more important than the salvation God got for you by being butchered by his own people. It's a horrible thing. And you're told to mortify it. You're not told. You know, you dance with certain things and you're going to pick up fleas. You, you can't mess around. There are sins that are going to take you down quickly and keep you down. And I had talked about this many times uh, one of the first messages I ever gave at the 1994 blowout that Dr. Ruckman, Dr. Ruckman had told me to come down to Pensacola and preach the blowout. I think one of the first messages I gave was a killer instinct. I talked about what it meant to have a killer instinct where you were like Samuel told Saul, you're not going to spare these things. You're not going to secretly cherish these things. You're going to deal with them as an enemy that's trying to break into your house and destroy your wife and kill your children. You're going to see this thing for what it is. And the Lord started to work on me in a number of areas. So, looking back, I thank God. I had to get right in a number of areas. It didn't happen overnight in many cases. It didn't. And it might not be happening for you overnight, but I'm telling you, work on it, and it'll be great if you get it done before the Lord calls us home. You really don't have... You don't know. You can't bank on, well, tomorrow, tomorrow, tomorrow. No, no. If you have opportunity today, do it. I was just telling my nephew the other day, he's visiting from upstate New York, and Uncle Bob, and I saw, I smelled his vehicle. It was full of smoke. I said, what, what is this? What do you, you smell like a chimney. And I says, who's going to go out with you? You smell like an ashtray. Who wants to kiss you? What female? Come on, what's the matter with you? Get rid of this. Get the patches. Get the gum. Whatever you need to do. Get rid of this filthy habit and expensive. Maybe not as much as New York State, but expensive. Yeah, Uncle Bob. I says, well, do it. I said, don't talk about it. Just do it. It's killing you. You're coughing and this thing smell, smells like a chimney in here. Yeah, I said, and you've been a Christian a long time. I said, so you're not new in the game, okay? Folks, don't wait till tomorrow. You don't know if you have tomorrow. Put it away. Amen. Amen.